Hey guys, Darcy here, and today we're going to talk about the new utility drawer in Luna that has both phase inversion and trimming. Let's get into it. All right, now that we're in Luna here, let's take a look at, uh, I have a session set up here for some purpose of testing here. We basically have some simple uh, drum sounds brought in from Splice, just dropped in as they are, no changes to the clip gain. And as you know, if you work with Splice, everything is at zero dB, like it's always super loud. So this is gonna come in real handy when we jump into this utility drawer. So let's open things up and we see this new utility drawer has two main functions. One is your uh, trim, which is in this little area here, this little bar where you can tr bring up and down the, the volume, uh, basically how much you're gaining into the pre of this channel. So before your tape and before your, your your uh, busing, um, as well as phase inversion, okay? So I'm gonna start with phase inversion because I have less to say there. I'm not an expert, so I'm just gonna touch on a few simple things, okay? So to demonstrate, we're gonna listen to this percussion loop here first. And I wanna first reference the fact that everything is distorting because everything's at zero dB, but when we get into the trim, we'll solve that problem. So if we first play this loop, We get a sense of what it is, all right? And then I'm gonna hit phase inversion. And when it's currently linked, so you see when I put my mouse over here, it says unlink, and that makes them unlinked and they're not highlighted and I click it again, and now they're highlighted, so they're linked. Um, when I do it linked, you won't notice anything, but when I unlink it, you're gonna notice some change, okay? So let's hit play. So basically what's happening here is when we flip the uh, the polarity of the left and right uh, headphones and we're basically flipping the sound, the waves upside down um, from a simplistic way of looking at it. And that's changing how, how it's like lining up and it's completely sounds weird and different. I don't use this a lot. I know this is used a lot for people who track like say live drums and they forgot to, you know, flip the polarity on certain recordings recordings, certain mics, because, you know, sound can overlap over two different mics uh, incorrectly and sound weird uh, and whatnot. So sometimes you have to, to, to utilize this. Where I tend to use this is when somebody's made a nice uh, sample loop, but they didn't really know what they were doing with mixing and they made it so wide with some plugin that it basically uh, sounds phase wise incorrect. And I try using the polarity to see if it improves it. I've also heard there's some interesting tricks to be done with this related to reverb sends and such um, but I won't speak on that since I don't have the experience with it yet but that's essentially what um, polarity is here and to note also if we click the polarity on one and we come to the bottom we'll see that we have a highlighted polarity at the bottom of the track if we click both then it comes fully highlighted if this is a mono track then it would just be only one option and you wouldn't have that kind of interstitial state between one being selected and the other not being selected okay so i'm gonna link this track up again and now i showed quickly before that we have this uh trim so this is putting extra gain in or taking gain away and again if we unlink this then we can do this independent by the actual channel itself. So what I'm gonna do is demonstrate using this by actually changing the trim gain going into all my tracks to get the balance of this distorted drum loop uh, sorted. And the thing I like about this is that yes, you can still use your clip gain, but you're getting an extra layer. And I'm going to show you after I get things set up right, how we can also utilize this in a more interesting way. So let's take this off solo and hit play on the loop. Make sure we are still selected on the loop. Perfect. All right, let's get this right.
Okay, so you see here what's, what's happened, all right? We adjusted the gain for each one of these uh, tracks individually. I was paying attention to how it was feeding into the VU meter on each one of my tape saturations on these tracks, all right? And then I took the gain down on the actual faders themselves on each track to get a healthy signal, trying to keep everything under minus 9 dB. Now, you probably noticed that we're gaining a little bit differently into our actual um, Neve summing, right? So I got everything in a level I want. I don't want to push my faders up. So now, because this trim is um, pre the, the, the saturation, pre the Neve summing, we can actually gain into that a little differently. So let's take a look at doing that. Great, so we put up 2 dB, and by the way, uh, you can also hold shift while adjusting and it'll do minor adjustments. You only see the whole numbers, 2, 1 dB, but it will be making adjustments in between, so use your ears. But you saw that we are essentially adjusting how much gain we're putting into this already set up um, uh, Neve summing here, right? And so, again, we could do the same idea uh, going into our um, uh, master bus. Now, an interesting way that you can also go about utilizing this, and I've done this with a client, is say you have a reverb sent and you have multiple different tracks that are all set up to send different amounts into that reverb send. And let's say the client says to you, hey, I need more reverb from like everything. I just want more, right? And there are you know, different ways of doing this. You could put the output up on your reverb. You could push the fader up on your send. But I actually tried, now that I have the trim, putting more into the reverb as well, depending on how your chain is set up. And it's a nice way to push more without having to go to each of your individual sends by just going to this trim on top of the bus and pushing more in. Again, it's all about decisions and what you're doing in the mix that you have. But it's uh, just a really simple utility uh, to be able to quickly do this without even having to leave the mixer window, without having to open a single insert. As you notice, my insert drawer is closed and we've done quite a bit right now in terms of gain staging in a very short period of time, uh, utilizing the tools we already had and the new utility. And before I forget, there's also the ability to automate all of these uh, utility settings. So if we go back to our timeline view, say for instance, we're on the percussion right now, we click on the clips or the views here, we can see we can go down to utility on the left-hand side and we have both the polarity invert and the trim options for our ability to automate as we see fit. So lots of opportunity there for you to, you know, ride a vocal or make some kind of adjustment. Maybe uh, something was recorded and the polarity was flipped midway through the recording and you need to fix that in automation. You have these options. Anyways, hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, leave me a comment. Let me know what you found most beneficial or let me know what you would like me to cover in a future video. Anyways, peace y'all. I'm out.